point number one co- goes very much with point number two, which is bet facts, not opinions. In the NFL preseason, it doesn't matter how good the teams are going to be in the regular season. It doesn't matter if the 49ers are an 11 win team and the Panthers are a four win team. Carolina can easily be favored over San Francisco in an NFL preseason game. So, in terms of what your opinions are on how good the teams actually are, has no bearing whatsoever in August. The only thing that matters in August is betting the information that the coaches and the coordinators are giving us and their histories in various roles. So when I say bet facts, not opinions, do your homework, that means dig and find the info that will actually help you win these games, not, oh, this team's good, this team's bad. That might work in the regular season. It doesn't work in August. Teddy, I, on that note, I actually prefer to look for the teams that aren't good and bet on them during the preseason and stay away from the teams that are good. With that said, obviously the Baltimore Ravens uh, are a team that would fly in the face of that statistic. Uh, 21 straight preseason uh, covers up until last year where they went 0-4. and Um Key numbers, You tell us about that from a side perspective, and then I will add to that from a totals perspective. Sure, but when it comes to Baltimore last year, of course, they only played three preseason games, so they went 0-3 ATS, 1-2 and straight up. And uh, Baltimore, when we look at why they've had all that success over the years, Harbaugh certainly had something to do with it. Good third-string quarterbacks who can create on the run is another big factor in that. And they don't have that. They didn't have it last year. I'm not convinced they're going to have it this year either. So the Ravens' success may be a thing of the past. When it comes to key numbers in preseason, look, we all talk about threes and sevens, how important threes and sevens are. And two and a half is huge from three, and three and a half is huge from three. In the preseason, yes, threes and sevens are still important. But remember, no coach is ever going for overtime in the preseason. You see a ton of games decided by one and two points. Missed two-point conversions, made two-point conversions. So the one, one and a half, two, two and a half becomes a very key stretch of numbers. When you're taking points, you want to take the plus one, plus one and a half, plus two, plus two and a half. And two and a half is a lot bigger than two in preseason. One and a half, two and a half are the meaningful numbers, much more so than the regular season. When you're playing the favorite – and it gets above minus one, less than minus three. You always want to take those on the money line. You want to win those games that they win on a two-point conversion or a, uh, by a point or two. And we'll see a lot more games decided by one or two points in August than we will as a percentage in the regular season. So in my mind, that's something that's huge for preseason betting. Be aware, the threes aren't as important. The ones, the one and a half, the twos, the two and a half, much more important in the regular season. Talk to me about totals, Lawrence. Uh, firstly, I want to say that's an incredible point uh, because a lot of people during the regular season don't see that much difference between minus one, minus one and a half and two. Uh, so I think that is a, uh, what is it? A highlighter point, if you will. From a totals perspective, the magic number is 37. Uh, since 2010, 30, anything under 37 has gone over the total 59% of the time. And any number uh, and any total over 57 has gone under 56.4. So, again, we're seeing less scoring. Teddy's got his facial expression going. I got a question. You, you, because Yes. So, again, the, the, the nature of the NFL preseason changed dramatically post-COVID because it went from four to three games. So I look at a lot of the older stuff as not being that valid anymore. Do you have numbers for the last three years, what it's been? I do not. I I do not. I only have from 2010. And that's a fair point, Teddy. But uh, the numbers are going to be lower. Also, with that said, don't be scared again, and we talk about this in regular season, to take that lowest total over. Uh, It does work in the NFL preseason as well. I mean, you see these super low totals in the NFL preseason. Uh, Don't be afraid to bet them over. Uh, Teddy, bet against teams with cluster injuries at any position. That's another point you want to talk about? 
Yeah, and I, I don't think we're going to get through all of these. We'll probably do half of these today, and we'll come back and do the other half tomorrow. Uh, but when you talk about betting against teams with cluster injuries at any position, to me, that's as meaningful a strategy as you can find in August. All right. If this team has a cluster injuries at offensive line, right, and offensive line is huge, but let's just say they have a bunch of offensive line injuries. So now the coaches and the whole game plan is designed, we can't have any more injuries at this position. The rotations are messed up. It doesn't matter. Offensive line, cornerback, the linebackers, the receiving core. When a team has cluster injuries in any one group, their game plan is going to be negatively affected in a significant way against an opponent that doesn't have cluster injuries in that group. So that's something I always look for when a coach is like, our linebackers are really banged up. Geez, our D- we can't have another defensive end injury. Those are bet against quotes because coaches will adjust their game plans and the guys who are getting the playing time won't be guys you want to be getting the playing time in those instances. Teddy, let's do one more point. I think it's the strongest one, at least from my perspective, and then we'll continue this tomorrow. And tomorrow I will give out some team-specific NFL X uh, angles and trends. For instance, Detroit Lions 12-4 and four to the over uh, in their last 16 uh, NFL X preseason games. We'll go through a lot of that tomorrow. But one of the biggest things that I'm looking at, and I think it's obvious, but I'd like you to delve into it, is the QB battles. You know, I, I want to take teams that are deep in the backup quarterback position, um, teams that have veteran backup quarterbacks that will come out there, uh, especially two or three veteran backup quarterbacks. Uh, talk to us about that. Sure. Now, first, let me rip what you want to do, talk about tomorrow. Team-specific information is meaningless. Uh, Coach-specific information is very meaningful because coaches approach game plans different ways. But a team, I don't care. I don't care what the Lions did before Dan Campbell got there. I'm all, I'm interested in what the Lions have done since Dan Campbell's been there because they're obviously the track record from one coach to another is significant. So the betting markets tend to react a lot. Oh, the starting quarterback battle for this team. You know, uh, ooh, who's going to win the starting job? Well, that's great. First half, second half, you could have the, you know, the undrafted, the the dreaded undrafted rookie free agent who can't run on the field. Most points spread outcomes get decided after halftime. The majority of points spread outcomes get decided after halftime. So these battles for the first string QB, they're all sitting by halftime. The real battles, the ones you make money with are the backup quarterback battles. Here's a starter entrenched. Here's two veterans or a veteran and a promising youngster they're looking to win that second string job. The coaches are going to call a game plan that designs for those guys to make plays. They're going to be on the field after halftime. And there are two uh, quarterbacks and offenses, there are two groups of offensive players that have ample motivation to succeed. And that matters at this time of the year. So I always look for backup quarterback battles. Backup quarterback battles, in my mind, matter a lot more than starting QB battles when it comes to quote unquote, bet on teams in August. Now we continue with laying points. If you are, make sure there's a bet against to go with your bet on. Do you want to delve into that? Yeah, let's, I mean, let's take a look at tonight's NFL card just as a prime example, right? Here's New England and Carolina. Carolina is a clear bet against in this game. You know, they're not starting starters. The, they got rookie QBs. They got undrafted rookie QBs. They have a new coach in his first game. They don't look organized. There's not a single positive that I can come up with Carolina for tonight's game. We have a bet against. The question is, do we have a bet on for New England? And the quotes from Jared Mayo, for me, not bet on in the slightest. All right. He's like, we want to do fundamentals. We're going to learn how to tackle. I want to make sure we're going to run the football. This is not a... a I don't have both ends of the equation, so I can't right. lay the points. It's just that simple. If you want to lay, again, lots of these games are going to be decided by, you know, one or two points. Good handful. It'll be decided by a field goal or less, a less. I would say at least a third of the games this week, next week, the week after, will be decided by a field goal or less, maybe more than that. When you get into let's lay points, there has to be both elements of the equation. You can't say, oh, I want to bet on this team. There's got to be a bet against for the other team. 
you want to say, I want to bet against this team, there's got to be some bet on for the first team. All, not talking about dogs, not talking about the lane one, one and a half, two, but when you get to a field goal or more, for me, I need both pieces of the equation. What do you think about that, Lawrence? Is that something you paid well, attention to? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question about that, Teddy, because it seems uh, completely obvious to me. Uh, so my question is, how does that differ from the regular season? Oh, there's lots of times you'll be like, I want this is a team I'm betting against. I'm going to bet against them until proven otherwise. Or this is a team I'm right. betting on. I'm clearly right. looking to bet on this team. Look, they're an undervalued commodity right now. And their opponent doesn't – it matters – some, but it doesn't matter as much as your opinion on the one team. In the regular season, we talked at the very beginning, bet facts, not opinions. In the regular season, you're going to have opinions about teams that you want to bet, that are reasonable to bet. In the preseason, there are no opinions about any teams other than the facts. This team's playing X, Y, and Z. This team's not playing X, Y, and Z. It doesn't matter how good the teams actually are. It matters who they're playing and what they're trying to accomplish in that game. So that, to me, is the huge difference. Um, And 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 that is why you don't need to have the bet against or the bet on in a a regular season scenario where the team you're already looking to bet on and bet against and do it until proven otherwise. Teddy, you you mentioned uh, in your points to me teams that blitz overwhelm overwhelm inexperienced offensive lines. So – uh, tell us, uh, you know, how do you find out that information, so to speak? Because real simple. you're, you're not right. Google. Listen, Google is a powerful tool. I'm sorry. I don't mean to, I don't mean to cut you off, but Dude, Google is a ahead. really powerful tool. You don't have to follow every beat writer on Twitter. You go to Google you click on Google news. You type in the defensive coordinator's name and the team name of the opponent that they're going to face. You know, tonight you would type in the Panthers, DC comma Patriots. See what pops up. Start clicking on some links and you find quotes from the defensive coordinator talking about what they want to do in this game. Doesn't work. You don't find something for every game, but you find something for some games and that's what you're looking for. Um, And the fact is Lawrence, when you have, when you have blitzing, I mean, blitzes, when a coach says, uh, we're going to work on our blitzing schemes this week. That's as strong a bet on quote as you can find. That's well, better that leads than us- we care about winning this week, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, that leads us right to the next uh, the next point. Um, and, you know, we get to do shows together every day. And one of the things that you really use uh, in your handicapping on a regular basis is quotes coming out of the dressing rooms, uh, that feeling, that energy, that vibe. Uh, And it's even more important in preseason, understanding coach speak. Talk to us about that. And this is one where experience matters. You know, it helps that you've been doing this a long time. There's lots of times coaches say stuff that's aimed for the media that's not necessarily for their players. What you want to do is try to read between the lines of some of the coaches' quotes. Sometimes you're going to be wrong. If you get decent at it, you're going to be right more than you're going to be wrong when it comes to understanding these quotes. And the key is the a lot of these quotes are going to be focused on the starters. Starters are going to play. Starters are going to play a series. Starters are going to play a couple of series. Point spread outcomes, the vast, unless you're making first half bets or first to score bets or any of that stuff, point spread outcomes are largely determined after halftime. So the coach speak we're looking to identify is what's going to happen in the second half of these games. And again, if you dig, spend some time with it, there's winning information out there. That's how we went 8-2 in the NFL preseason last year and why we expect to have similar success in the NFL preseason this year. So, Teddy, I want to go quickly through just a couple of teams and discuss them. Now, these these, um, angles, trends are specifically with the same coach because we spoke about that yesterday and we don't want to go back too far. Uh, NFL preseason is more about the coach than the team at times. So when you look at Doug Peterson's Philadelphia uh, Eagles, 3-13 and two straight up, 4-13 and one in their last 18 preseason games. Um, Pittsburgh, 
This is a team that have won their last six preseason games straight up in ATS. They're 18 and four straight up in their last 22 and 16 and six ATS. And that goes back to 2017. Minnesota, and I love Kevin uh, I, O'Connell. Lawrence, Lawrence. Yes, sir. Can, can I cut you here and talk about those two teams first? Because that's important yes. what's going on in the market yes. with those two teams yes. specifically. If you notice, this week, Philadelphia, who's been a terrible point spread team in the preseason yep. for Sirianni, and Sirianni does not give a shit about winning games in August. Philadelphia has taken a boatload of money against Baltimore – and Harbaugh yeah. and their and the and the Ravens insane track record. And that line's bounced back and forth, bounced back and forth. We've seen again money for Philadelphia this morning, where that line was pick them. And now it's back up to minus one, minus one and a half for the Eagles. Ravens open minus three. So the markets paying no attention to that trend. Look at the other one you talked about, Pittsburgh uh and uh uh Houston. The Steelers have been a great point spread team under Tom yep. year in year out in the preseason bet on all the way what's happened this year Pittsburgh open minus two minus two and a half now they're two and a half point dogs so the broader markets don't give a shit about these coaching trends what they care about is what the coach is saying in terms of who's playing and how much so if you know a coach cares and the betting market is saying well the coach caring doesn't matter it's all about the personnel Maybe there are bets to be made on both of those games. If you're right. And, and Denny, uh, flat out, I think these uh, these uh, trends are very relevant and more so, more relevant than the, the talk that comes out of the coach. Actions speak louder than words. Sure. And Baltimore, you know, had this incredible, I mean, of all the preseason yeah, success, 21. Girl, you know, we, they still talk about Mark Levy for the Buffalo Bills as the single worst preseason head coach he lost every game you bet against him every year and all you can go four and all against the spread because Levy like didn't care a little bit and Harbaugh's on the other end where he won what what 20 19 or 20 games in a row 20 something in, games a row. in a row over yeah whatever it was last year the Ravens one and two straight up 0 and 3 ATS in August the quarterback rotations weren't the same the defensive depth wasn't the same this year Bob. So uh, of the two teams after the line moves, I'm more interested in the Pittsburgh side than the Baltimore side. I want no part of the Ravens this preseason. They have this long-term right. great track record, but this year's team is not those teams when it comes to August football. And we showed last year, maybe Harbaugh's desire to win all these preseason games isn't what it once was.